Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to the finals of Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour. So we had the four tournaments and the best four players of these tournaments actually qualified to the finals. Uh, and let me introduce you the players, Magnus Carlsen, of course, and Daniel Dubov, Ding Liren and Hikaru Nakamura and we have the pairings Magnus Carlsen gonna play against Ding Liren in the first semi-final and Daniel Dubov against Hikaru Nakamura um, and the players play until they win at least three matches so a best of five not best of three and um, so this is the the difference we're gonna have much more games this way a uh, time control rapid time control uh, four games and then if there is a draw um, then we're gonna have the blitzes two blitzes and if blitzes are not decisive then we're gonna have armageddon so pretty standard in the magnus carlsen chess tour tournaments um, and i want to show you the game uh, that this is the second game between magnus carlsen who gonna play as white and ding liren who's gonna play as black the game number one was won by ding liren he didn't have the good tournaments so far uh, i mean sometimes he played really good chess sometimes not really but here uh, i think he's in the very good form and uh, he won the first game against Magnus Carlsen so in the second game Magnus Carlsen actually should try to win if he wants to you know um, had the chance uh, to actually continue and win the first match uh, so without further ado let's see what happened on the board Magnus Carlsen as white opens with d4 uh, we have knight f6 by Ding Liren, knight f3 d5 and now bishop f4 London system again by Magnus Carlsen and now c5 by Ding Liren uh, e3 e6 pretty standard stuff c3 and now bishop d6 challenging the bishop uh, knight b2 d2 and now taking the bishop isn't that great because this pawn actually you know can charge to f5 uh, with the support of the bishop or with the support of the queen and that's gonna be very unpleasant for black so usually in this position black doesn't take the bishop on f4 but knight c6 this is the main move and it was played you know uh, over 1500 times on on the top level magnus carlsen play that against Vichy Anand, against Karyakin, against um, a lot of other players, Fabiano Caruana and others. So he definitely knows how to place that. Um, but instead of knight c6, uh, Ding Liren goes for some another variation or maybe not variation because this wasn't played before on the top level. C takes on d4 and it's pretty interesting because now uh, Magnus cannot take with the e pawn because the bishop is hanging so that's the first thing uh, and Magnus loves these pawn structures you know in the London system if he managed to have the pawn and um, this e pawn on d4 then um, he usually you know wins that structure and grandmasters in studio were laughing at that like uh, it's you know it looks like pretty simple however Magnus always find the way um, to win that now what Magnus Carlsen can play here uh, if he for example take with the c pawn the problem is that the structure gonna be completely symmetrical and it's gonna be extremely difficult to actually find any wins in this in this symmetrical boring and uh, very drawing position so instead magnus carlsen went for bishop takes on d6 sacrificing the pawn now uh, ding liren of course could go for queen d6 and after e takes on d4 um, the material is equal but as i said magnus carlsen loves this kind of position maybe Ding Liren didn't want to play it uh, I'm not really sure uh, Ding Liren calculated very precisely that he gonna win the pawn and he was actually right however there is the price for that we have D takes on E3 and now Bishop A3 so this Bishop gonna control F8 and black cannot castle on the king side that's the price um, E takes on D2 and now Queen D2 and here Knight C6 so Ding Liren developed the Knight uh, and now queen g5 attacking the pawn on g7 uh, and as black cannot castle then Ding Liren uh, defend with the rook so rook g8 and now bishop d3 rapid development of Magnus Carlsen we have h3 kicking the queen and now queen retreat to e3 staying with the queen uh, in the front of the king 
We have queen on b6 asking to exchange the queens, but Magnus is not interested. Queen e2 and now bishop d7. So Ding Liren prepares um, to castle on the queen side. We have castle by Magnus Carlsen, castle by Ding Liren and now b4. So Magnus starts his attack and it's very interesting and uh, very important moment of the game because here actually Ding Liren has a chance um, to sacrifice the pawn or give back the pawn because he is up one pawn. Uh, and actually get a very active position. He could play something like e5, uh, sacrifice this pawn. The threat is very simple, so very dangerous. White, of course, uh, should take that pawn. And after that, uh, the rook from the g file can go actually to e8. And now black gonna have a very dominant position, very active position. Uh, let's say queen g3 and now knight e4. And now white has to decide what to do. And the best move in the position is actually taking this knight. This knight is a uh, very, very dangerous. And uh, white have to give up the, the one of the not many assets, the pair of bishops. So uh, this was possible. However, Ding Liren say, OK, my position is very solid. I'm not interested in any, you know, activity here. And he played king b8, improving the position uh, of the king. Uh, and Magnus continue his attack. Attack b5, kicking the knight, knight a5, very typical um, defensive position for the knight from here. Knight can defend, for example, b7, but it's also very good blocker and the pawn, you know, um, on the a5 cannot approach further. Um, we have knight e5. So uh, Ding Liren didn't go for, for e5. This is why Magnus goes for knight e5. And now it's a pretty dangerous position because this pawn is attacked and it cannot be defended easily because of another bishop. So uh, bishop e8 and here is the problem. Ding Liren actually disconnected the rooks. Uh, it's not always easy. It's not always even possible to, to exploit, you know, the disconnected rooks. However, it's one of the motives uh, whenever you you know disconnect your rooks, uh, you always have to keep in mind that you know it can be exploited. It's one of the you know tactical motives in many many games. We have bishop b4 making a space for the for the a pawn and now rook c8. So getting with the rook on the semi open file and now a4 as planned, supporting the pawn on b5. Uh, and here Ding Liren could actually go for something like queen c7 um, and after let's say c4, just exchange a couple of pieces and continue the game, maybe rook f to c1 uh, and then queen probably would have to land on f4 uh, and after bishop c4, bishop d7 again connecting the rooks um, and continue the game. So so that was possible. White are more active, definitely has, um, you know, more activity and pair of bishops and uh, black from the other hand have one extra pawn. So it's slightly better for white, uh, probably much Magnus Carlsen would still enjoy that position. Uh, but Ding Liren tries to be more active and actually he wants to uh, ask Magnus, maybe you want to give up your pair of bishop, I can give back my pawn. Uh, and Magnus said, OK, so bishop e4, d takes on e4, queen e4 and now f6, kicking the knight. And here actually Magnus Carlsen found the best move in the position. Queen h7, queen h7 pretty unexpected, so the knight is still hanging, but as I said, rooks are disconnected. This is one of the motives, chess motives, um, not often, you know, played in the games. However, it's a, it's a very important motive. And believe me or not, but this position is so rich in tactics and I will show you some of the craziest lines. For now, exploiting the disconnected rooks is the is the first. So uh, as you see, the rook is under attack. So black has to do something about that. Uh, bishop h5 would be the very bad idea because this is the, another tactic, the fork. So uh, knight d7, that would be, of course, winning. So uh, maybe bishop b5, still staying with the bishop on this diagonal. The problem is after a takes on b5, this knight is under attack, double attack. So actually after f takes on e5, rook a5 wins the game because white's gonna have one extra bishop. So that's also not the greatest idea. Bishop c6, this is the best move in the position, however. Uh, but still very, very interesting because after b takes on c6, f takes on e5, 
white half very silent move rook a to b1 and another tactic here look at this bishop d6 with the check and discover attack on the queen pretty interesting so queen probably would have to retreat but then rook f to d1 and now we have another tactic that's pretty insane another tactic this is the pin on the board so knight c4 defending uh, but now look at this bishop f8 it didn't happen in the game because um, Ding Liren um, didn't play uh, bishop on c6 however that would be very very beautiful game bishop f8 this is just insane and now if queen c6 then of course the rook is hanging so it doesn't doesn't really work queen f7 defending the rook doesn't work as well rook b7 of course is winning rook d7 is even stronger because now rook b7 is a very serious threat and also the queen is under attack so um queen exchange for the for the rook is actually the best move in this position and finally the best move for black would be uh, rook g to f8 uh, so after rook b7 uh, then of course queen b7 c takes on b7 rook c7 defending this pawn and try to continue from from here however uh, white gonna have very comfortable game and, uh, and yeah shouldn't have the problems uh, to win so uh, in this position actually Ding Liren didn't go for this move uh, but he played knight b3 saying okay you're gonna take my my rook I'm gonna take your rook you're gonna take my knight I'm gonna take your knight we can you we can continue uh, so Magnus said okay queen g8 we have knight a1 but now big surprise uh, because Magnus didn't go for rook a1 rook a1 is still winning you know rook a1 f takes on e5 uh, and after queen g7 this pawn is under attack this pawn is under attack uh, and white should win that game as well however Magnus Carlsen has a much more finesse here and he played queen e8 bang and in this position Ding Liren actually resigned uh, and he resigned because after rook takes on e8 we have this uh, fork which I show you before and after king c7 knight b6 so black would have to play knight c2 but then uh, white of course also uh, retreat with the knight knight c4 and uh, this knight gonna be trapped here so um yeah knight b4 is actually forced as well and white gonna win the game with the with the extra knight so this is why in this position after queen e8 what the beautiful move by magnus carlsen uh actually ding liren resign uh, so this was game number two then we had the game number three and four they ended with the draws uh, and then in the first blitz game ding liren actually won and in the game number six magnus carlsen had to win and he won on demand so he equalized and then we had the armageddon and then magnus carlsen chose to play as white so he had to win having five minutes against four minutes and ding liren needed only a draw however the 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 opening was a disaster uh, after 10 moves uh, ding liren started to get the advantage as black um, and at, at the end of the game he had the completely winning position uh, however he didn't continue uh, he just made the perpetual check and uh, Magnus Carlsen uh, actually draw that game that's uh, but it doesn't matter because uh, the draw means that Ding Liren won the Armageddon so Ding Liren get the first point in the semi-finals and another pairing Daniel Dubov against Hikaru Nakamura was also very very exciting Daniel Dubov actually won the first game then we had the Hikaru Nakamura who equalized and then Hikaru won again uh, with the black pieces so Daniel Dubov had to win on demand uh, as well with the black pieces and he did it and he did it then in the blitz game first blitz game was drawn and the second blitz game was won by Hikaru Nakamura so Hikaru Nakamura got his first point as well so as you see these are the semi-finals 
and Ding Liren one point, Hikaru Nakamura one point. Uh, still a lot games to see. A uh, very exciting semi-finals. If you don't want to miss another games from this um, from this tournament, super final. Press subscribe, smash the bell button, and of course, if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And yeah, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.